Welcome to Botox. It's a conversation that fills the culture and not the faith. Today we have a very special guest, one of the members, one of my family members, Lip G. How you doing, gang? What's up, gang? Good, good, good. All right. Man, how you doing, bro? You chilling? I'm chilling. Chillin'? I'm happy to be here, man. I'm thankful for the opportunity, man. Good, bro. Botox. Botox, yeah, man. So, bro, we just want to start off with where you from, bro? I was, I was born in Illinois. Okay. Grew up down here pretty much in Greenville. So I spent a lot of my whole life. Uh, Lady. You know, I've been in and out, you know, just really just been on the east side, to be honest. I've been here my whole life. It's dope, it's dope. So I want to get into your most recent music, bro, therapy sessions. I've seen yeah. that you dropped the EP. Sure. But the thing about that is, bro, you only had six songs on I'm, I'm like, six songs with a name like therapy session. I would think you had way more songs on there. So... Why only six? I say I usually try to stick to shorter EPs and, mm -hmm. and shorter projects of music because a lot of times people really don't listen to long term shit. If it's shit. you know shit. 30, 40 songs, it's, if that shit an hour and a half long, motherfuckers ain't gonna listen to all that shit. If they do, it takes them longer to listen to it. That's it's true. a replay value, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so you want people to be able to just go back and replay your shit yeah. after already listening to yeah, it. Like, yeah, all right, that shit hard. That, that shit again. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, mama. okay, okay, okay. I like that. I like that. So, with the six songs, out of it, like, which one is your favorite? Because it's called therapy session. So I would feel like you dump in everything that you want to get out of your head into the project. So with only six songs, it's like, which one is gonna be your favorite? Honestly, I can't really pick a favorite mm -hmm. because I really call it a therapy session because of how the music was made more than mm -hmm. what I was necessarily talk about. You know, it was. Sessions where me and Kenzie, we just linking them up and making music. We get me out my element, trying to get me to, you know, get outside the box a little bit. So it kind of was like therapy, just doing something new, freestyling, going off the head. And I usually don't normally do that. I write everything. So, you know, it just was really a therapy session to get in the booth and, and, and work shit out with the homies and doing it. You know what I like? I like it. Because I, I noticed that about you. Like, you're more of a wordplay type of guys and rather than go in the booth and punch yeah yeah i, I hate punching that. that shit is so hard yeah that shit is so hard to me. i could not do that shit. why you think it's hard it's just thinking of what to say next you know what i'm saying when mm -hmm. i when i got something that i done sat on and worked on for a little bit it kind of gave me the confidence to, to know what i'm saying and go, know what i'm going to be able to just get in there get that shit done and keep it over. so you more of a like prepare myself for the task yeah. rather than just going into it blind yeah, yeah okay i like that i like that so we're gonna go to your most notable project. I feel like okay, not an album, for sure. But it was an album. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, it was though. For so sure. why call it I, not an album? So I called it not an album because even though according to like platforms, it was an album. Mm -hmm. In my mind, it really was a mixtape. Like it wasn't okay. my. That's not my debut album. You know what I'm saying? That's okay. the only album I dropped. Not album. I know people was gonna look at it like, oh, this is debut album, whatever. Right. It's not. You know what I'm saying? That's just a piece of work that I wanted to put out. But I knew everybody was gonna say it was an album and I didn't have a name for it. So I said, fuck it, I'm gonna call it not an album. album. <laughs> like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. It's kinda like the chance the rapper shit. Like, yeah, exactly. He was a rapper, but chance okay, oh, okay. You know I, got, I got you. Yeah. I got you. That's smart. And that's smart marketing. Cause niggas gonna be like, an album that's yeah. not an album. And that's like, the first thing people say, bro. It's an album. They say it on iTunes. Okay. I mean, yeah, say that, but you know. Ain't no more mixtape platform, so I couldn't put it nowhere else. You know what I'm saying? I had to put it somewhere that was going to classify it and categorize it as an album. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you said, it's not no mixtape platforms. Like, if you had a choice, like, would you drop that shit back in the day, like on Spin Rilla or now it's mixtape yeah, instead sure. of making it an album? I mean, me personally, like, I feel like you should put music everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So I'd have put it all as, as much as I could and, and when before Spin Rilla really died out, that's why I first started uploading my music at. You could do it for free, you could do it from your phone. Mm -hmm. So that was the first place where I put my music at, you know what I'm saying? But that was like my real, real early shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So Okay. Okay. So I wanna get into my favorite song mm -hmm. off of not an album, Wake and Bake. Okay, yeah. That was like when I heard Wake and Bake, I felt like it was a group project that everybody participated on. Yeah, like for sure. And you had like what, you he, L.A. and Low Indigo. And Lo, yep. That's a lot of niggas on yeah. one song. So yeah, how did y'all yeah. all like compliment each other and like just actually feel the vibe to do a song with so many, so many dudes? On? I'm gonna be honest. I didn't think it was gonna come together like that. You yeah. know, like it really wasn't supposed to be like. Who was the first? Song. Who was the first person that you wanted featured on it or got on it first? 
Definitely Helix. Okay. For sure, because he came up with the hook. Because I had been telling him, like, we need to work. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he, he came up with the hook. And once I heard that, it was, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm on that. You feel me? And I knew I wasn't going to be able to fill up the rest of the song, but I didn't want that shit to go away. So mm -hmm. I'm like, Kenzie was there, Lowe was there, you know what I'm saying? They all, they both had some shit they could put on that motherfucker. And you made that shit happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So do you do that like normally, like if your homies come or different artists coming in the studio with you, like if you feel like okay, this is gonna be a filler song or I don't have anything else, you just Hell yeah, like I'm me personally, like I feel like working with other artists bring more out of me. You know what I'm saying? So even if I wrote something and then somebody else hop on that shit, I might get sparked to think about something yeah. else and then I re hop on that for a second verse, you know? Huh. So, uh -huh. Anybody that I'm in the studio with, if you come to the studio with me and you got some shit that you like, you hearing on that beat and you want to hop on, come on, I ain't tripping. Anybody. I like, I like that because a lot of artists, they don't share the space. Like, they want to be the nigga that go keep punching yeah, in, keep punching in, and the shit don't sound right. But I see that you, like, give niggas room yeah, to flourish. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, I want to get into you and Kenzie's collaboration. Like, out of all your albums, well, you have two albums, but yeah. out of all your projects I've seen, you and Kizzy collaborate the most. So is he like somebody that you just typically think of, like as a person with some feeling, or is it just more so like, oh, I think Kizzy sound good on this? It's, it's really both, like, because I hear some shit and I'm like, I know Kizzy will sound perfect on this one, mm -hmm. and so then I get, it on, I get him on there. Or it'll be some other shit where I'm like, okay, I don't really know what to do with this. Ken, do you like this shit? Like, can you think of something to hop on this bitch? And he do. And it's just, it always mess. And we got a sound that is, it just go together it well. Do. You know what I'm it saying? Do. It just mess. So I, any chance I can work with him, I'm going to take it. I don't give a fuck what it is. I give, I give it like the instance of high low. Like, you more low, chill, and Ken just come in with high the High energy on my mama. High energy punching yeah. that bitch. Okay, okay. So, a lot of people don't know, but you were Wizard Kelly at one oh, point yeah. in time. I know you as Wizard Kelly before Nip yeah, G. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, how is Nip G different from Wizard Kelly? Like, what are elements that you implemented from that old artist into this new artist? I say the the biggest difference is probably progression. One, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I progressed a lot. I don't work on my wordplay, work on my flow, how I hop on beats. Um, other than that, I really say just delivery. Like, my delivery is way more confident once I change my name. I feel like that was a stepping stone I needed to really boost my confidence a little more. You feel me? And honestly, it, it, it's the same shit, but just, you know, a little bit better. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. You got to rebrand yourself. Yeah, that's all. A lot of people rebranding. A lot of people get stuck in the same old, same old. Yeah. I get you. I get you. So, also, too. I see that you a Twitch streamer, bro. Yeah, for sure. So what do you do? Like, what type of games you be playing? Type right, shit, so or do you stream your music on Twitch? Sometimes I stream my music, okay. or a lot of times I play GTA RP. Okay. So you know, it's like GTA Five with mods and motherfuckers hop on there and do all kinds of shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to find some new games to stream because I'm trying to, you know, push that shit. variety. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But a lot of people don't. I don't want to play Call of Duty and all the same shit. Yeah. I want to play some shit that's like indie games that, you know, gonna bring some some kind of attention but still give me a way to create some creative content, you know? Shout out so, to Twitch name. So, N-I-P-G-E-E, -E, everywhere on Twitch, but Nip G everywhere. All right. All right. And Kick, too. Nip G on Twitch, on any streaming platform. Yeah. Make sure y'all tap into him. The boy go everywhere. crazy. Everywhere. Nip G everywhere. So, LSD. Is one of my personal favorites as well. Okay. It's one of your singles, but I see that with LSD, you keep read like you keep dropping part one, part yeah. two, part three, like on mm -hmm. therapy sessions. Right now, you got part three to mm -hmm. LSD. So, is there a significance behind the song? Is it because it's one of your most popular songs? Honestly, what it is is there's a certain sample that's in LSD. The first LSD I ever did is a certain sample that's in. It. And for some reason, people use that shit over and over and over. Yeah. And every time I find a song with that sample, it's a different sound, but it still has the same cohesive sound. Okay. So every time I hear that shit, I can't help but to get like the urge to just hop on that shit. So the first time I got on there, it was me and Kenzie and okay. Smack. Mm -hmm. The second time, I think it was just me. 
and now the third time I hopped on that bitch again. Yeah. You know, I just keep finding that motherfucker. So if I find another one, it's gonna be part four of my motherfucker. Okay. Okay. Would you rather it be just you? on LSD or you like bringing in a different element like I, like I love working with other people I feel like you know when you brainstorm with other creators mm-hmm. and you come together as cohesive units and in a space mm-hmm. it creates the opportunity to do amazing things it creates sounds that never would have happened on your own yeah. it's certain shit that I'm going to think of I'm going to put in a song or write in a certain way certain cadences I'm going to use that mm-hmm. Kinsey's not going to use and vice versa you know so I feel like that creates you know, a whole, it's like a sub-genre and a sub-genre okay. once you start working with people, okay. you know? Yeah, it creates its own type of lane. Exactly. Like, it's you, other person. I get you. I get yeah, you. Sure. I get you. Your process is, like, different from a lot of artists because a lot of artists, like, when I talked to them prior, they was like, yeah, I like to lock in by myself, be in a certain yeah. type of area, but you feed off other people's feet for sure. I, to for keep sure. the motivation. And yeah. if I'm in the school and I'm by myself, like, it's kind of like a job. Like, I'm in there to do what I got to do and get the fuck on, but, you know, there and I got people around. I'm with like-minded people. I mm-hmm. I feel the need to be in there longer. I feel like okay, this is the space I'm supposed to be in. This is space that you know my people at. I this is where I need to be at. You know, so it makes me want to be there longer, work harder, etc., etc. I like that. I like that, bro. You are way more deeper. Like, yeah, for I, sure. bro, I, I know you at like a deeper level, but yeah. like, I've never seen you this deep yeah, when it comes sure. to your music like it's this shit is not just surface level Hell not, not at all. all i've been making music since i was like 16 17 yeah. i'm 25 now so it's like you know i'm not at the point where i'm at the point where i'm just trying to do this shit because i love making music mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and i'm gonna do whatever i can to keep doing that and keep the, the passion behind it because that's where a lot of people fuck up is losing their yeah. passion for that, shit. that shit that shit is true when that shit start to feel like a job it's like yeah. oh i got exactly i gotta clock in yeah yeah but like when you keep that shit fresh like you said keep rebranding yeah. yourself for sure and uh, to the note of rebranding, I see that you took all your old shit and you were Wizard Kelly. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, I know that you changed your name, yeah. but is there certain songs as Wizard Kelly that you wish you would have kept and just made them under the name Dip G? Honestly, the song Dog Food with okay. me and Kenzie, that's the only song that I really wish I would have dropped on Nip G. You okay. see? Because honestly, like, that's one of the hardest songs that me and Kenzie first made the other sure. year, first week. You know sure. what I'm saying? And that shit's a real shit. I remember shedding tears listening to that. Mm-hmm. That shit is real shit. But I know a lot of people are not ever going to hear it. And now it's kind of like it's not going to hit the same if I redrop it. Because it's, it's not going to sound the same. It's not in the same space. So it's like that's yeah. something that you just had to be around for. Or yeah. you just had to know about. You feel like it's not going to be as authentic? Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Why Why do you feel it that way? Because I feel, like you said, you feel that it was a very passionate song. And yeah, sure. It was a very truthful song. But if you feel so strongly about it, like. I say really like the production, uh, you know, just my delivery and shit, you know, the, okay. the, the mixing and mastering on the song. Okay. It's just, I don't feel like, even if I put it out and people are going to go listen to it every once in a while, it's not something that's going to be like, damn, like, I'm going to go play this shit every day. Because, I mean, it be, it's on my SoundCloud if I'm not mistaken. You know what I'm yeah, saying? But, it's still on your SoundCloud. But people just, they're not going to go through all that work to get to that song, if that makes sense. they rather it be... If, if that and was they say, yeah, exactly. Okay, you know what I'm okay. So that's all it is. Okay. So your end of the year EP, that was your first, like, that was like your introduction EP as Nip G. Yep. How is end of the year EP different from your first, like, project you put out as Wizard Kelly? I know the person is different. As, I don't want to sound like redundant as no, no, between the two characters, but. It has been a major shift yeah, yeah, between sure. the two. So um, how do you feel like it's different from end of the year EP and then your first project you put out as Wizard Kelly? Honestly, if I'm not mistaken, I think I only dropped singles as Wizard Kelly. Mm-hmm. And I think I started to take music a little bit more serious mm-hmm. once I bec- like rebranded as Nip Deep. And, and truthfully, I think that's when I kind of turned it up a notch. You yeah. know what I'm saying? With my wordplay music selection. Uh, production work ethic because like that one year after the end of the year EP mm-hmm. I did like three or four three or four EPs that, that year you yeah. know what I'm saying so it's kind of like that just boosted me into the confidence level that I needed to continue to go forward with it I noticed that you also too drop like you might drop like two three 
projects within that year, mm -hmm. but they're all like short. Yeah, hell yeah. So it's like, okay, like end of the year EP, what that came out of what, 2020? Yeah, 2020. 2020. And then you dropped something else. Mm -hmm. It was uh, dope. 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 Right, right, right. And then you came back with not an album. Yep. The, what is that, 2022, 2021? 2020, was it 22? I think it was 22. I think, it was 22. I think that was 22. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just noticed that like you make it really short in between. You give people like a little moment to breathe, and then yep. it's like okay, a full project. And I try to do that because people want content. You know, it's, it's never ending attention span. So mm -hmm. if I put out this tape right now with 15 songs on it, and I just work my ass off writing this shit, it's, it's the hardest shit I feel like I ever wrote. In two, three months, when that shit die down and motherfuckers not listening to that shit no more, now I'm like, damn, I gotta come back out with another song. Mm -hmm. So what I do instead, I drop three to seven song EPs, LPs. So then, by the time you're done listening to that shit, and you like, all right, I'm tired of listening to this shit. I got another Ooh, thing. Okay, okay. okay. So I like, like that. It's loaded up, and if I do that, that creates a space for me to overlap tapes. And so if I want to drop another tape while I'm working on all this shit, I got an abundance of shit that's already written. All I got to do is pop in the booth and record it. You know what I'm saying? That's hard. That's hard. Okay, so if no one ever heard your music at all, a day in your life, and they wanted to know who you were as Nip G, yeah. what is one song you would tell them to go to right now and play it from the top to bottom? What would it be? This song. Okay. I would say dysfunction because I know it's not just me on the song, but mm -hmm. if you listen to that song, you can hear the hurt, the pain, the passion, the, the fire in me and Kenzie. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you can learn a lot from me and my parts of that song. You can also learn a lot from me and Kenzie and his part of the song. Mm -hmm. So every time I tell somebody to listen to my music, I always tell them to go listen to dysfunction and then find whatever you like from that. You know what I'm saying? Okay. okay. And also, too, I want to say, like, off first listen, a lot of people would think you like some Cali. Yep. Because you choose a lot of, like, West Coast beats and stuff, and your music is very bouncy, but yeah. you also give wordplay as well. Is that, like, intentional, choosing the Cali-type beats? Yeah. And, like, what's the influence behind it? You know, I grew up on people like Snoop. Okay. NWA fans of Ice Cube, like I just love old school Cali music, Sugar yeah. Free, okay. you know, E40, just listening to different people. Then, Pimping music. Yeah, like, yeah. then Kendrick and Schoolboy came out and yeah. they, they kind of showed me, like, oh shit, like, I can make shit on raw ass beats that's still, like, lyrical. Mm -hmm. Like, motherfuckers that have some crazy ass shit, like, with some crazy bounce in it, they be talking his shit. Going and dumb. So, like, that just influenced me to, like, do what I like and what I want to hear. And then the people that want to listen to that is going to gravitate towards it. Mm, so you put out music on based on your ear, yeah, not with exactly. everybody else. Like, okay. Exactly. I like that. I like that. That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. So um, you have the tattoo prolific. Like, is that like significant of Nipsey Hussle? That's, yes, that's why you did the whole Nip G. So like, how has he been a big influence and impact into your music? I was a big Nipsey fan before yeah. he died. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. RP Nipsey, man. I feel like a lot of the shit that I did was and, and grew up doing, like, through college, really. Like, through college and seeing, like, how he moved and kind of holding me into who I am now. You know what I'm saying? Learning to look at shit from not just a one sided perspective and, and, and thinking about shit long term, not short term, and doing crash out shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he made me realize that, like, it's music business. It's a business at the end of the day. At the end of the day, like, and so you gotta move accordingly. If you want people to see you some type of way, you gotta be. You gotta show yourself a certain type of way. And the way he explained prolific, it just stuck with me because you know when you prolific at something, it means you profound at yeah. something. You, you great at something. You're you know an outstanding person in that field. You advanced exactly. It. Right. And, and I feel like. I am and the people around me are all prolific. So, you know, when he passed away, I wanted to go get something that commemorated that. You know what I'm saying? And so I went and got the face tag. And then Nip G, that's like what my homies in the hood and shit called me. You know what I'm saying? They always like, oh, you look like Nip G Hustle, yada, yada, yada. So, yes. niggas been telling me that since I was in fucking high school. So, they, it just stuck with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that's a little baby Nip. Mm -hmm. So, then they start calling me Nip G. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, I just stuck with it. I'm like, all right, yeah, fuck, I can go with that. It's hard. All right, Nip. Is there anything else you want to tell the people? Any brand? Shout them out, bro. Man, I just want to say 
Go cop your no good merch, your bow boys, bow talks, everything. Oh my mama. Yeah. Offermate, is that how you pronounce it? What? Yeah, yeah. Offermate, go get some Offermate merch right now. We out here, outside. Shout out to the cameraman, my boy Ron. Shout out LAK. Shout out all my people that's outside. Everybody. Man, you feel me? Because I ain't been outside in a minute. Oh, my yeah. father. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you, bro. Thank you for it's stopping by, babe. It's love, bro. Me, it's love. Show. Okay. Botox. Okay. You talking about? <laughs> Let me delete this one. Let me name this one. What? Welcome to Botox. Welcome to Botox. It's a conversation that fills the culture and not the face. I am your host, Chloe from the Go As Bill. And today we have a very special guest, somebody I call family. Nip G. Thank you, brother. What the fuck was that? Hey, <laughs> you ready? <laughs> 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 <laughs>